reporting on cost information. The financial statements of a manufacturing business consist of the following. The production cost statement, the income statement, and the balance sheet. This year we are only going to look at the production cost statement and the short income statement. The production cost statement is used to calculate the cost of production of the finished goods produced during the financial year. The cost price of the finished goods sold, cost of sales, can then be determined. The cost of sales amount is then carried over to the income statement. The income statement is used to calculate the gross profit by using sales minus cost of sales as we are used to. The net profit by deducting the period costs. In this case, the sales and distribution costs and administration costs. So it's a bit different than non-manufacturing enterprises where we subtracted all the various expenses to get to the gross profit. Here we will only subtract the sales and distribution costs and the administration costs. The following process is used to draw up the production cost statement and the income statement. So firstly, the production cost statement, which is used to calculate the cost of production of finished goods. So we have our direct material costs. We add to that the direct labor costs. We add to that the factory overhead costs. And to that we add the work in process at the beginning of the year. And then we subtract the work in process at the end of the year. And then we will obtain the cost of the production of our finished goods. When we focus on the income statement, where we calculate the net profit for the year, we have our sales that we know, less the cost of sales, well, the, in this case, the, loss, the cost of the finished goods sold that we actually get from the production cost statement. And then we also subtract our sales and distribution costs as well as our administration costs. And then we will obtain the net profit for the year. So let's focus now on the format of the production cost statement. So we have the production cost statement for the year ended. And we have we are going to have notes where a lot of the work is going to go into and then we have our amounts. So from the previous slide, we already got the basic structure. So we know we have the direct material costs, the direct labor costs. If we add those two up, we will get our prior cost. All the information in the production cost statement we can find, in fact, in our working process account. So now that we have the prime costs, we will add the factory overhead costs to get the total cost of production. To that, we add the work in process at the beginning of the year. If we add that, we get the subtotal. Then, finally, we subtract the working process at the end of the year. So that's all. In fact, 
the value of the goods that we not completed at the end of the year. If we subtract that from the subtotal, we obtain the cost of production of finished goods. <coughs> so that, that is in fact the cost price of all the goods completed during the financial year. So now, as I indicated previously in the notes, a lot of the work is, um, is in there. So we know we have the direct material cost account. There the structure is we start with the balance at the beginning of the year for the direct material costs. We add the purchases, we add the carriages, we get the subtotal. Then we subtract the balance of the raw material at the end of the year, in other words, that which we did not use, to get the raw materials that we actually issued during the year. So it's the same principle as when we use the periodic stock system, where we say opening stock plus purchases minus clo closing stock gives the raw material issued to the factory. Similarly, we have a note for direct labor costs. We have the direct wages, and then we also have the pension, medical, and UIF contributions related to that direct wages. Very important, this is only for employees who work directly in the production process. In other words, the variable costs. Then thirdly, we have the factory overhead cost note, and that is the cost involved in manufacturing the product, but which are not directly linked. In other words, the fixed costs, so the direct labor costs here, the variable costs, now the factory overhead costs, we know it's the fixed costs. So it's the indirect wages, the pension, medical aid and UIF contributions related to the indirect wages, those that are not directly involved in the production of the product, but indirectly. Factory rent, water, electricity, depreciation on the factory equipment, indirect material. Add all of it up to get the total to be transferred to the to the face of the production cost statement. <coughs> so now we can move on to the format of the income statement. So we have our sales, we subtract the cost of sales to get the gross profit, nothing new. We will have a note though for the cost of sales. And then what's different from the non-factoring enterprises, we only have selling and distribution costs and administration costs with a note of each where the details are contained. So once from that gross profit, we subtract those two costs, namely selling and distribution and administration costs, we get our net profit. So it's a much shorter version than for non-manufacturing businesses. Now the managers must make sure the percentage gross profit added to the cost of the product is obviously enough to cover the selling and distribution and administration costs, otherwise we will run at a loss. So finally let's just look at the notes. So we saw in the previous slide that there's a note for cost of sales. We start with the balance of the finished goods at the beginning of the year. We add the cost of production of the finished goods and that we um, can find from our production cost statement 
and then we subtract the balance of the finished goods at the end of the year in other words the ones that we did not complete or rather did not sell so that it doesn't form part of our cost of sales and then we will in fact obtain the cost of finished goods sold okay then the details of the selling and distribution costs what can it all include things like commission on sales advertising bad debts depreciation on delivery vehicle etc anything related to sales and distribution in other words marketing the product getting the product to the customer etc add it all up get the title to transfer to the face of the income statement administration cost similar concept and selling and distribution now just all relate to administrative costs it could amongst other things be things such as office salaries pension medical aid and your if contributions related to the office workers depreciation on office equipment stationery etc add them all up get the total transfer to the, the total to the face of the income statement